Okay, so this is not the video that I thought we would be making about the Calgary Flames, but today we're heading over to their defense situation and talking about a guy whose name has been tossed around in a bunch of rumors over the past few weeks, Noah Hannafin. Because when it comes to Hannafin, 26 years old, 6'3", 216, signed to the end of this year, making $4.9 million a year, there was always a back-and-forth conversation going around as to whether or not he would resign or if the Flames would trade him away. Back in the summer, there was all this speculation saying that guys like Hannafin, Lindholm, Backlund, Toffoli, they'd all be asking out or they'd all be traded out because they weren't going to resign with Calgary and free agency. That belief was solidified even further when you saw the Toffoli trade, but then it was pushed back a bit with the Mikhail Granlund resign. Not Granlund, my goodness, Backlund resigning. And now, heading into the season, we had ourselves a few other names like Lindholm, like Tanev, like Zadorov, like Hannafin, who were still on that soon-to-expire label. But as the year went on, we saw some guys get traded away. We saw some guys get offered contracts. But when it comes to this Noah Hannafin situation, it appears that maybe a trade is inevitable at this point. Here's why. Let's head over onto an article published on NHLTradeTalk.com, as well as a post made on the TSN website. Now, let's start off with the TSN video. What this is, is a clip from the Ray and Dregs podcast from earlier this week. Now, I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with Ray and Dregs. It's Ray Ferraro and Darren Dreger going out there and talking about NHL stuff on their show. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to this specific episode of the podcast. But... This article on NHLTradeTalk.com goes out there and summarizes what it is that Dregs and Ray talk about. Here's the piece in question. Flames are likely to pull a huge offer from defenseman Noah Hannafin. After offering $60 million, is a deal still on the table for defenseman Noah Hannafin? If not, what are the Flames thinking for in a trade? Here is the analysis done about the Ray and Dregs clip. In the latest episode of Ray and Dregs, the potential trade plans of the Calgary Flames took center stage, with a particular focus on defenseman Noah Hannafin. Analyst Ray Ferraro sparked speculation by pointing out Hannafin's situation, especially in light of his rejection of an eight-year, $60 million deal. Now, 60 divvy 8, that's $7.5 million a year. That would have been a pretty beefy AAV, Darren Dreger then chimes in, expressing how such a refusal would undoubtedly alter the organization's perspective on the player. It's not clear if the Flames will pull the offer, but there's reason to believe they'll consider it. That would be enough for me. I'd be, we're not putting $60 million back on the table in Calgary, Dreger said. If an accurate depiction of what the Flames are thinking, then the question becomes, what now? Now, the thing is, when it comes to Noah Hannafin and the way he's played, I mean, he maxed out as a 48-point defenseman in the Calgary Flames system. He did that in 2021-2022. This season, he's on pace for roughly 41 points in 82 games. He right now has 17 and 34. I don't know about you, but a half a point a game defenseman is only worth $7.5 million a year under very specific circumstances. Now, for Hannafin, he has the size, he has the shot-blocking ability, he has the defensive shutdown ability. That is what made him such a highly touted player ever since his days as a fifth overall prospect in 2015. But if you're so confident that this is a guy who is worth that amount of money, then it should come as no surprise that he should be able to expect 7.5 mil, right? Not unless you feel that 7.5 mil a year is too much for Noah Hannafin. Therefore, you kind of get scoffled or you get soured at the idea that he would reject this deal. Noah Hannafin seems to believe that he may be worth a little bit more than that. Either that or he just straight up does not want to re-sign in Calgary. Either or. Take your pick. But when it comes to raw point totals, half a point a game, I'm not too sure if that's worth necessarily 7.5 mil. There are other intangibles that make him valuable, I get that, but if you were to ask me, I feel like 7.5 is a little bit of an overpay for Hannafin and his services, and it is kind of bonkers that Hannafin himself would reject it, unless he, of course, just really didn't want to play in Calgary. Let's go back over onto the article and read what else they have to say. Ferraro concluded that offering a staggering $60 million again is likely off the table for the Flames. The consensus leans towards a potential trade involving Hannafin, with the suggestion that it might occur just before the NHL trade deadline. The question posed is the type of return that would entice the Flames to part ways with Hannafin, even if they're willing to commit 7.5 per season to him. 
Both thought the longer the flames hang on to the defenseman, the more he is worth. And that's a thing as well. This is a player who, because of his intangibles, because of the defensive game, because of the shot blocking, because of the points, there is a good enough profile that if you were to wait it out and say, all right, well, we're just going to wait until the trade deadline and then trade him away, the price then is probably a lot more than what the price is right now. Just saying. Dragging this out would be an appropriate option, mostly because there is a pretty good profile here, and NHL teams that want defensemen for their playoff runs are going to be there. We talked about Boston, we talked about a few other teams that are involved. Of course, the Boston one makes the most sense since Hannafin's from there, and there have been rumors about him wanting to go to the Bruins for so long now. But when it comes to the trade cost, this is what another podcast goes out there and talks about. This is on the same NHLTradeTalk.com article. Another podcast over at Flames Nation proposed a package akin to a first-round pick and two second-rounders. While it may sound steep, they drew parallels to historical trades involving impactful defensemen. The comparison included the Flames' acquisition of Hamannick and the exchange that sent Hampus Lindholm from Boston to Anaheim. Now, whether or not you could see... Oh, excuse me, it's the other way around. From Boston to Anaheim, wait a minute, yeah, no, it's the opposite way, Hampus Lindholm went to the Boston Bruins. Ha, huh, the article's wrong. But either way, when it comes to Boston in particular being involved in these defensemen, I guess you could say that this is a team with nothing to lose, considering the fact that they weren't supposed to be as good as they are this year anyway. But still, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the idea of a trade price for Hannafin being something in that realm. First round pick, second round pick, multiple of those. And whether or not you think the Calgary Flames could have soured on Noah Hannafin because he didn't accept that big beefy contract. Again, part of the reason why they would be sour about this is because they feel that Hannafin may be worth a little bit less than what they're offering. If they say, all right, we're going to give you 60 million bucks, just stay here. That's all we want you to stay here. We'll give you as much money as you want. Here's 60 mil. You're not worth it, but we're going to give it to you anyway, only for him to decline it and reject the offer. That must be seen as a bigger slap to the face. Now, of course, if they feel that he is worth the money, then it's fine. But I don't really know if Noah Hannafin being priced at 7.5 mil per season it was on my bingo card for this year, but um, yeah, I guess that's the way she goes this season, isn't it? So if you're a Calgary Flames fan, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Noah Hannafin is a $7.5 million defenseman? And what are your thoughts on him rejecting that beefy contract offer? $60 million, eight years long. Noah Hannafin did not want to play in Calgary for that dollar amount. Do you think there is a dollar amount that would get him to stay? Furthermore, do you think Hannafin just straight up wants out of Calgary at this point? All of the ideas floating around talk about defensemen like Tanev and Zadorov and Hannafin all getting traded. Zadorov already did get traded, so now all we gotta do is wait and see who else is on the chopping block, right? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Calgary Flames fan. What are your thoughts on the trade price being a first and potentially two seconds? What are your thoughts on Hannafin rejecting the deal? What are your thoughts on the Calgary Flames? not really appreciating that, and then potentially pulling the offer instead of going higher. Do you think it's in the Flames' best interest to try to keep Hannafin around, considering these circumstances? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye.